Good evening, and welcome to our students, families, and friends. This is Syracuse University's new student convocation. Will the audience please rise for the academic procession? <laughs> Leading this evening's academic procession are the school and college student marshals. They carry the banners that represent their home, college, or school. The marshals are seniors who are selected by their respective deans and faculty. They are processing in the order of which their school or college was founded. Leading the university's deans, faculty, staff, and chancellor's party is the mace bearer, Nancy Weatherly Sharp, Professor Emeritus from the Newhouse School of Public Communications. Professor Sharp carries the charter mace, which has been part of the university's commencement ceremony since 1959. The mace is an ancient symbol of authority, representing the university's integrity and mission. Following the Mace Bearer are the university's deans, Dean of University Libraries, David Seaman, Dean of the Graduate School, Peter Vanable, Dean of Arts and Sciences, Karin Ruland, Dean of Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs, David Van Slyke, Dean of Visual and Performing Arts, Michael Tick, Dean of the College of Law, Craig Boyce, Dean of Engineering and Computer Science, Teresa Dahlberg. Dean of Education, Joanna Massingilia. Dean of Information Studies, Elizabeth Liddy. Dean of Management, Eugene Anderson. Dean of Public Communications, Lorraine Branham. Dean of Architecture, Michael Speaks. Dean of Sport and Human Dynamics, Diane Lydon Murphy and Interim Dean of University College, Michael Frasilio. 
They are followed by the Chancellor's executive team. Next in the procession are the university's faculty and administrative staff. They are followed by our distinguished Demeridae faculty. And finally, at the end of the procession are members of the Chancellor's Platform Party. They're led by University Marshals Shu Kai Chin and Kelly Chandler Olcott. Syracuse University Student Association President James Franco. Dean of Hendricks Chapel Brian Conkle. Dean of Admissions Maurice Harris. Andres Laguna, Senior Marshal, College of Visual and Performing Arts. Professor Cherise Laprie Corsby Massey from the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications. Syracuse University Vice Chancellor and Provost Michelle Wheatley. And Syracuse University Chancellor and President Kent Sibarud. Will members of the audience who can please rise for the presentation of the colors? The color guard now moving into place is composed of members of the Army and Air Force Reserve Officers Training Corps at Syracuse University. By authorization of the Board of Trustees and the University faculty, I now declare this convocation for new students to be in session. Good evening, everyone. I am Michelle Wheatley, Vice Chancellor and Provost. Before we begin our program, 
I ask that you remain standing for the invocation and the presentation of the colors by Syracuse University's Air Force and Army ROTC cadets. The invocation will be given by the Reverend Dr. Brian Conkle, Dean of Hendricks Chapel. We are here from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. How amazing to assemble at this moment, how astounding to center in this space. We are here. So we suspend our thoughts for a second. We rest our attention for a minute. We pause. And alongside one another, new friends from diverse places, we allow the moment to sit in our spirit. We accept this new situation to simmer in our souls. And we pray. Youthful and spirited God, we give you thanks for making all things new. Thank you for filling our minds with curious wonder and a devotion for learning. Thank you for opening our hearts to the art of possibility. Thank you for shaping and sustaining our resolve to do what is right and just. And today, as new students commence their studies as global citizens in service to the common good. May you journey with them always. Inspire them with the wisdom to engage both paradox and ambiguity. Provide them with the courage to spark both order and chaos. Stir up in them the vision to lead and the humility to listen. Today and always, may they seek and be crowned with knowledge. This is our hope, O oh God. We trust that it is your desire. Amen. Please be seated, thank you. Good afternoon. As Vice Chancellor and Provost of Syracuse University, I'm delighted to welcome you, our new students and families, to Syracuse and to the start of what I know will be an exciting and rewarding academic journey here. As we convene today's convocation, I would like to acknowledge with respect the Onondaga Nation, the indigenous people on whose ancestral lands Syracuse University now stands. I would also like to acknowledge and thank on behalf of the entire university Professor Emerita Nancy Weatherly Sharp, who makes her final appearance as university mace bearer today. The carrying of the mace at the ceremonial opening and closing of the academic year is a long-standing tradition at Syracuse, and Professor Sharp has served the university faithfully and well in this capacity for 13 years. We thank her for her service. I'm 
I'm sure these last few days have been hectic for you, but I hope that on your arrival to campus, you received a warm welcome and a helping hand. A total of 743 students, faculty and staff volunteers have worked hard to prepare for and assist with settling you into your new campus home. I'd like to take a moment now to recognize and thank them. I would ask those student volunteers to stand as a group when I call their names. The Goon Squad. <clears throat> Peer Advisors. International Peer Assistants. Resident Advisors. And Orientation Leaders. Today is a tremendous milestone in your life but it's also a milestone in the life of those who supported and encouraged you along the way and who very shortly will be leaving you to our care. So, to the parents, friends, and family members here, let me offer you this assurance. As a university, we recognize and appreciate the profound trust you are placing in us. We are honored to assume that trust and I promise that your student will be in very capable and caring hands. Today, we welcome 3,934 new undergraduate students to the university. We are, we are also delighted to welcome those of you here who are among the 1,409 new graduate students joining us this fall. Your desire to pursue graduate studies speaks well of your passion for knowledge and commitment to scholarship. I hope it also inspires our undergraduate students to consider advanced study for themselves someday. All of you here have diverse interests, expectations, and aspirations, but each one of you is now a part of the Syracuse University community. And all of us, the university administration, faculty, and staff, are deeply invested in your success. We want you to thrive during your time here and long after you leave. Your success as future professionals, engaged citizens, and leaders is ultimately the measure of our success. So what can you expect from your time here? A robust academic experience, whether you aspire to be an engineer or economist, physicist or philosopher, social worker or scientist, teacher, journalist, artist, or entrepreneur. Hands-on learning. Whatever discipline you choose to pursue, you will have opportunities to put classroom theory into action through research, community engagement, a business incubator, internship, or other activities that feed your passion and advance your academic and life goals. Global engagement you will be part of an international community of scholars from day one. Syracuse University students as a whole come from more than 100 countries, many of those countries represented among you today. And we are committed to supporting all of you, domestic and international students, as you engage with one another, learn from and with one another, and pursue scholarship with global implications both on campus and at study abroad sites across three continents. A vigorous network of support to ensure you get the services you need to achieve your academic goals, clarify your career plans, and after graduation, transition smoothly into the workplace and world. Finally, we are invested in ensuring that you learn from faculty who are outstanding teachers scholars, researchers, and mentors. Our faculty include MacArthur Fellows, members of the prestigious National Academy of Arts and Sciences, 
fellows of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and internationally recognized writers and poets. We have professional schools whose deeply accomplished faculty have distinguished their programs as among the best in the nation. They're all here because they believe in the value of knowledge and in higher education, and because they love to teach. I would like to ask the faculty, deans, and members of the senior administrative staff to please stand now to be recognized. Students, each one of these individuals standing before you is invested in your success and ready to support you on your academic journey. Let's give them a round of applause. I know right now you have an awful lot coming at you, and it's bound to be a little bit overwhelming, but in the coming weeks and months, you will find your rhythm. And as you do, remember this, your college experience is what you make of it. The opportunities are there, seek them out, plan for them, and take full advantage of them. Do this, and in a few short years down the road, when you and your loved ones are seated in the same space as part of commencement exercises, I promise you, you will be a different person, a better person, a person who is ready and eager to make a difference in the world as a result of your Syracuse University education. And I'm confident that you will. It is now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, James Franco, President of the Syracuse University Student Association. Hello, class of 2021 and 2022. My name is James Franco, class of 2018, and your Syracuse University Student Association President. On behalf of the Student Association, I would like to welcome you to the Orange family. You are now part of an amazing group of SU students, faculty, staff, and alumni. We have a vibrant and very involved community. Syracuse University has over 300 student clubs and organizations, not to mention countless opportunities for involvement in schools and colleges. Our students study all over the world as well as in New York, DC and LA have amazing internship opportunities and take classes with world-renowned faculty. I encourage you to take advantage of every possible opportunity that comes your way. I would now like to introduce Syracuse University President and Chancellor Kent Siverud. Good evening. Uh, we've clapped for a lot of people, but could we clap for one more group, which is a great university marching band? <laughs> on behalf of my colleagues on the faculty and staff, on behalf of more than a quarter of a million Orange alumni, I welcome you to Syracuse University. I'm going to be followed in this welcome by Professor Cherise Laprie. Professor Laprie is an outstanding researcher, mentor, and teacher. She teaches communications and media studies in the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications. Professor Laprie's work includes research in the fields of anthropology, sociology, political science, medicine, and engineering. Professor Lepre has been funded through the National Institutes of Health, the California HIV AIDS Research Program, and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. To the incoming 2017 students, you've come here to become part of a great university. This is a lively and a sprawling and dynamic place with a glorious, a complex history, a history in the sciences, in the arts, in the humanities, in the professions, in sports, in public affairs, in communications, in architecture, in education, in engineering, and law, and management, 
in information, in veterans, and in serving humanity. I welcome all of you, more than 5,000 of you, first-year students, transfer students, master students, professional students, doctoral students. You come from all over the nation and the world, from every state, from Puerto Rico, Guam, the Virgin Islands, DC, more than 70 nations on six continents, as well as more than a dozen Native American nations. Every single one of you equally belongs here. As far as all of us are concerned, you are not now all equally and forever orange. It's a great thing to be orange. It means that you'll work hard and learn a lot inside and outside class. It means that people will and should be kind to you, including people who look and seem completely different from you. They will be kind to you because you are orange exactly like them. Being orange means there's now nowhere you can go on Earth from New York City to Beijing, from North Dakota to North Korea, from a mosque to a synagogue to a church, indeed to the International Space Station. There is nowhere you can go without finding someone else who is orange and who wants to help you. Today is such an important day in your process of becoming orange. Today, you're gonna to hear these speeches. You will sing a song, our song. You will say a lot of hellos and a lot of goodbyes. And you will receive and accept the Syracuse University charge. That sounds pretty simple, yet those simple things will cause many emotions. In a few minutes, Dean of Admissions Maurice Harris will ask the new students to rise for the charge. I then get to read a few sentences to you, and you will, like thousands and thousands of Orange students before you, you will undertake to live those sentences while you are here. The words I speak to you and the words you speak to me are adapted from words first spoken here 146 years ago by a man who became Syracuse University's Chancellor, Erastus Haven. I've heard the charge a lot of times. I still wonder at it. Chancellor Haven told students that education is not something bestowed on you, but something you earn through hard work and discipline and seriousness of intent. He urged that a good education encompasses a full range of disciplines, from the arts to the humanities to the sciences. He believed that you learn not only from your teachers but from your peers, and that in the process you would both become a teacher yourself and make friendships that will last a lifetime. I stand here today in wonder that Chancellor Haven in 1871 could so accurately imagine what each of you will experience in 2017. I stand here and wonder, and I ask that each of you nurture a capacity for wonder in this at times polarized and cynical and negative age. Wonder is about two things. It is about noticing what you don't understand and asking why and it is about being open to the awe and joy of learning or discovering something new, someone different, some place that is truly wonderful. If you have a capacity for wonder at this university, you will never lack for wonderful experiences. Almost everything that happens here, almost everything good that has ever happened here, started out because someone usually a student wondered why. Students wondered why the university's colors needed to be pink, and they drove the decision for Syracuse to become orange. That was in 1890. Students wondered uh, why there couldn't be a better way to move into residence halls, and invented the goon squad who moved you in. That was in 1944. Students wondered about the universe, and they had a role in proving one of the great scientific theories of this century, and that was in 2016 at Syracuse University. There are thousands of people and clubs and activities and majors and courses and opportunities here, each one a chance to experience wonder. 
Incoming 2017 students, when you hear and accept this charge, the charge that dates back to 1871, I ask you to have the capacity to wonder how you can make this university your own, how you can ask something here, how you can build something here, how you can challenge something here, how you can prove something here, how you can leave something behind here that you alone uniquely contribute. We all want to help you do that. And we want to do that because this university is nothing less than the accumulation of all the wonders that thousands of students and faculty and staff have made before you. So now I want to turn and speak to you folks on the upper decks in this dome. I want to speak to the parents and the family and the loved ones of the incoming 2017 classes. You are now orange too. You are now, however, no doubt experiencing a different kind of wonder. I have dropped one of my kids off at college many times. I know how you feel because I have been there. I was happy that my kid was starting at a great university. I was checking out the residence hall and the roommate and the food and the course schedule, but I had a knot deep in my stomach. I wondered how I was going to adjust to having a piece of my soul, my kid, walking around on a campus far away beyond my ability to completely control or protect or influence. My wife and my mother-in-law and my family and I had poured so much into each of our children, so much time and so much love and so much energy and so much worry and so much inspiration. It was a labor of love, but boy, was it labor, and we got very used to it. It defined, indeed, the best part of our whole lives. And then suddenly there I was in a vast auditorium, and some president or some dean in a robe on a stage was telling me it was time to go home and leave my kid behind. I hated that president. I hated him, I hated her, because they did not know my kid. That president did not have a clue how much love and work and joy our whole family had poured into that kid to make attendance at a university possible. That president had not seen all the times that my kid had triumphed, let alone all the times that my kid had been sick or troubled or just plain infuriating. That president did not seem to understand that our family was not dropping off our kid in some abrupt divorce. Instead, we were embracing a transition while our uniquely constituted family remained very much intact, including with a kid at college. <clears throat> what I want to say to you on the upper decks, to families, to parents, to loved ones, at Syracuse University, we do know these things. We do know that you want to continue to be there for your kid who is now an adult. We do know that you want to be there for them in different ways that match your tremendous achievement of starting one of your own at a great university. <clears throat> we know this because so many of us have sat where you sit today, including me. We do know this because so many of us including half the deans at this university and our provost, are the first in their family to go to university. Parents and family, thank you for all you have done, for all you will do for the members of the 2017 entering class. Like all at Syracuse University, I know and I daily reflect in wonder, indeed in awe, at the magnificent human beings that you have sent us. Because of your work, these students are now orange, and they are now our most sacred trust. Good luck to all of you, students and loved ones, and congratulations.
Thank you, Chancellor Savarud, for this honor. Today, I want to share the most important thing that I've learned in over 20 years of taking and teaching college classes. We are all amoebas. I know it sounds strange to hear, but it's true. You, me, your parents, your teachers, Chancellor Siverud, we are all amoebas. That's not to say that we are single-celled organisms. Clearly, we are multicellular. But we are stimulus response machines. When we encounter a stimulus, we have a response. And more often than not, that response is fairly consistent. We consistently move towards things that make us feel good and away from things that make us feel bad. Consider the people with whom you spend time, the media you consume, even your decision to matriculate to Syracuse. Each of those outcomes was the result of approaching one thing and avoiding another. This tendency is evident in the comparatively homogenous makeup of American neighborhoods by race, socioeconomic class, and political ideology. Like amoebas facing a harsh environment, we aggregate into similar groups for comfort. But this significantly impacts your education, both formal and informal. About half of Syracuse students come from the top 20% of the American income spectrum. Alternatively, half of Syracuse city children are below 20%, excuse me, in the bottom 20%, which hovers at about the poverty line. Therefore, as a whole, Syracuse students are comparatively privileged. Discussing one's own privilege is uncomfortable. Discussing privileges regarding socioeconomic class in America is especially uncomfortable because it is antithetical to a meritocracy. We react with anger and frustration to these topics because we are psychologically predisposed to avoid uncomfortable situations. But uncomfortable situations define college. You leave behind the things that make you comfortable and embrace new people, new experiences, and new knowledge, both about the world and yourself. I started college as a budding geneticist at the time, I didn't know that there was a stereotype that women, and especially women of color, were supposed to be bad at math and science. My mother immigrated to the US by herself at 20 years old and earned degrees in business and computer programming. And if you don't mind, I'd like to take a pause right now to wish my mother a happy birthday. In addition, my high school AP classes were mostly girls, and there was racial, religious, and economic diversity. One more shout out for White Plains High School. But when I got to MIT at 16, some of my male classmates told me that I only got in because I was a woman. Some of my white classmates told me I only got in because I wasn't white. And some of my wealthier classmates told me I only got in because I was not wealthy. I was an affirmative action acceptance, and less was expected of me. I internalized these tiny degradations and eventually came to believe that MIT had made a mistake in my acceptance. I felt like an imposter, but I didn't know that the imposter syndrome was a real thing. The work was hard, the partying was easy, and I dropped out a few weeks into my second year. In my time away, I realized that it didn't matter how I got into college. It only mattered that I get through college. I had the opportunity and the privilege to earn a degree from a prestigious university, regardless of others' comments or my own insecurities. Since then, I've earned five degrees, two bachelors, two masters, and a PhD. <laughs> so 
So please, believe me when I say, regardless of your background, college will make you uncomfortable. The work will make you uncomfortable. Your classmates will make you uncomfortable. Your professors will make you uncomfortable. I will make you uncomfortable. In my classroom, we discuss complex issues, and conversations often end with more questions than answers. We consider things that we have been actively taught not to consider, and we embrace the resulting distress, anxiety, and discomfort. We don't get angry, we don't give up, and we don't rely on stereotypes. These reactions, although seemingly natural, perpetuate problematic discourse. Instead, we mindfully engage with these psychological growing pains, both within ourselves and in others. I know now that my classmates were probably uncomfortable, and in turn made me uncomfortable because they were uncomfortable with their own discomfort. Many studies document this trend. Like amoebas, we respond to new and difficult stimuli with defensive maneuvers. However, Unlike amoebas, we have the capacity to recognize our discomfort and respond in ways that make the world a better place. So today, I leave you with the following. Wherever you came from and however you got here, you all have the opportunity and privilege to learn more about yourselves and respond to new stimuli in ways that are proactive, not reactive. In this process, you will experience severe discomfort. But remember, you are also part of an ever-expanding group of classmates, parents, alumni, faculty, staff, and local, com local community members who are all working to help you get through and emerge a critical thinker and a stronger person. Regardless of your major, by seeing patterns in the world and in ourselves that we have been trained not to see, we become creative, innovative problem solvers and catalysts for change. Thank you. And now, I would like to introduce Andres Laguna, class of 2018 and senior marshal College of Visual and Performing Arts. Classes of 2021, 2022, new transfer students, welcome to Syracuse University. Quiero extenderle la más cordial bienvenida a Syracuse University a nuestros nuevos estudiantes de las clases del 2021 y el 2022. It is an honor to address you in this most festive ceremony. Today, we celebrate you, what you have done, and what you'll do to drive change and enlighten your communities and your countries. Seeing you today actually reminds me of the conversations I had with Chancellor Sieverud and Dr. Chen during my own orientation. They listened to what I had to say about my country, my dreams, and my ambitions. I am very grateful for those talks. And it really goes to show how warm the people are here. And believe me, you'll need that warmth once temperatures get below freezing next semester. And speaking of our people and our spirit, I want to very affectionately salute my best friends, my fellow orientation leaders who have been honored to welcome you to our home. As you can imagine, adjusting from tropical Panama to winter wonderland Syracuse took a little while. My parents did insist in me bringing lots of thermal underwear, and I'm actually really glad I listened to that advice. <laughs> but beyond this transition and the capacity to adjust, I came to understand that two of life's greatest purposes are to overcome our own challenges 
and to exceed our own expectations, going beyond the boundaries we have now set for ourselves. I am convinced that you will be able to make the difficult workable and find that no goal is too strenuous to attain, to go out there, chase your dreams, and make the world a little better, one step at a time. This moment is most auspicious to also remind you of the reason we are in an institution of such caliber. We have a mission, to endeavor to seek knowledge. It is, after all, emblazoned in the motto of our school, Suos cultores scientia coronat, knowledge crowns those who seek her. That journey entails assimilating an amplitude of understandings and ideas to construct a worldview for ourselves, to defend truth, and to champion the freedoms we cherish in here. Such task is anything but simple. It requires listening, observing, and putting ourselves in the place of others to understand their way of thinking and find consensus so that together we can move our global community forward. We've seen our societies moving towards the extremes of politics and ideology when the challenges of our time demand analysis and pragmatism. We've seen freedom turning into profligacy, protest overtaking dialogue, correctness reigning over action, and truth being questioned. I like to think, however, this is only a temporary trend because I believe that we will rise up to this test. I am convinced that knowledge, information, and dialogue will prevail over those voices that tempt us to abandon reason. But this hope will only hold truth as long as we have the audacity to listen, the boldness to champion our ideas and respecting those we disagree with, and the courage of celebrating the diversity of opinions, backgrounds and stories that make our society strong. One of my country's greatest leaders, Omar Torrijos, accomplished what many thought impossible in the 70s, to carry on and rise victorious from a generational struggle that sought to return the Panama Canal and the Panama Canal zone back to Panamanian hands. He said that there are no bad people, but bad governments and that if we were impeded from making peaceful changes, we'd be pushing our peoples to propitiate violent changes. So let us make changes in our lives and in our communities, but changes founded in thought and reason. I invite you to listen, to explore, to ask, to talk to those who disagree with you, to be informed and to seek knowledge, this is a worthy and righteous fight. And as I learned from one of my bosses, fighting for what's right is worth it. <laughs> Remember, thank you. Please remember that you can have a friend in me. I'm really all over this campus, so it won't be hard to find me. So, welcome to your new life. Welcome to your new home. Thank you very much. And now, I'd like to ask Chancellor Sieverud, Dean Maurice Harris, and James Franco to come to the podium. Maurice Harris, Dean of Admissions, please present the incoming classes of 2017. Chancellor Severu, it is my honor to present to you our incoming undergraduate class of students to receive your charge. Will all new undergraduate students please rise if you are able and remain standing for the Chancellor's charge. Once the chancellor has read his charge, please respond together in unison. You will find the response written in your program.
from a speech by Erastus Haven, Chancellor of Syracuse University, on September 14, 1871. I charge you to embrace your part in a great university. A university is a place of genuine life and of patient, disciplined thought. It is a place where muscles must be trained, inventions must be created, sciences, arts, and religion must be mastered, and the conscience must be enlightened. At this university, there must be study and thought without limit and without end. Other schools have a narrow curriculum. At Syracuse University, we assign to you a definite beginning, but we direct you to no one end. Somewhere along the way, at Syracuse University, you will become the teachers, and the teachers will learn from you. Original study and imagination will never cease. Like all great humane institutions, your university will be constantly changing and will never be complete. Yet we will always enable every one of you to increase your learning, your ability, and your success. I charge you to thrive here, to learn here, to teach here, to make lifelong friends here, and to seek knowledge without end. We hereby accept your charge to work hard, thrive, and seek knowledge without end. Thank you. Alrighty, class of 2021 and 2022, you can stay standing. We have one more request for you. At Syracuse University, we have a variety of traditions that I hope in your time here will have just as much meaning to you as they have come to mean to me. One of the first traditions you will take part in is singing the alma mater, which we will get to shortly. After the program, we invite undergraduate students and family members to join us for dinner on the football field. For our graduate students, the Graduate Student Organization invites you to join them for a welcome picnic at the Incomplete. And now I'd like everyone to please rise, if you are able, which you are, for the singing of our alma mater. Syracuse University often, students often join together in sway as we sing the alma mater. Today, as we welcome you as new SU students, we invite you to participate in this honored tradition. First, the band will play the alma mater one time through so that you can become familiar with the melody. Then the band will play it back again and we all will swing or sing. Don't forget to sway. <laughs> My fellow students will show you how. You will find the words written on the back of your program.
New students, you are now part of the Orange family. On behalf of Chancellor Siverud, your deans, faculty and administration, I wish you all the best and great success as you begin your Orange career. Ladies and gentlemen, we will conclude our program today with the academic recessional. Please remain in the stands until the members of the recession clear the floor. Thank you.